Happy New Year and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-white Monastery Mentor deck, a card that has been in standard for quite some time but has never really seen a ton of action. But we're trying to change that today. This 3-mana 2-2 has prowess, so it gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn whenever we cast a non-creature spell. And whenever we cast a non-creature spell we also get to make a 1-1 white monk creature token that also has prowess. So it can quickly build up an army of tokens in this deck thanks to many blue cantrips and then we can even play defense with the mentor and the various monk tokens quite well especially if we have some instants to cast during the opponent's turn to help grow all our prowess creatures now what often ends up happening after you cast Monastery Mentor is that the opponent's going to take it out basically on site because most people know that it's a pretty dangerous card to leave unchecked. So that's where Helping Hand will come in handy. A 1 mana sorcery returning target creature card with mana value 3 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So 1 mana way to get back Mentor means that now we'll often have a bunch of mana untapped after getting back our Mentor so we can immediately cast a few more cantrips and get those sweet monk tokens and then another three drop that complements this strategy nicely is Hadi Jin, since we're going to be filling the graveyard to try to reanimate our monastery mentor and Hadi Jin, and at the same time we're also increasing the Hadi Jin's power while discounting our instant and sorcery spells and there's quite a few two mana spells in this deck that we can discount down to one mana so these are the main win conditions in our deck and then we can help fill the graveyard to try and reanimate these by using the Prankster's Adventure, which gets to mill four cards and then reveal an instant or sorcery and put it in hand. So that can help find our Helping Hand. And alongside Helping Hand, we also have two copies of Recommission, a bit more expensive, but instead of entering tapped, we get our creature untapped with an additional plus one plus one counter. So it does have a little bit of upside there too. And of course, with a Hadi Jin discounting our spells, it will still cost just a single white mana. And then we can also use Charter Course to draw two and then discard a card. So that can also maybe discard a three mana creature if we know that we have a Helping Hand or Recommission coming up. And later in the game we can also attack first to just draw two. And then we've got Consider, which gets to Surveil 1 and then draw, so that also has a chance of milling something to eventually bring back. And even two copies of Gaze, which we can cast to Surveil 3, and then Flashback for 1 and a blue as well. So that can also help set up our Graveyard, Grow Hot Gin, also just a 1 mana cantrip to enable Monastery Mentor. And then a sleight of hand, another one mana cantrip here. And then because we have so many cheap cantrips, we also have a relatively low land count. So we can have more instants and sorceries in the deck to enable Hadi Jin, especially if we use the Prankster. So that also works out nicely. And because we get to draw so many cards, we'll usually be able to hit our land drops in time. And then we've got some more interaction with Get Lost, destroying creatures, enchantments, or planeswalkers, even though the opponent does get to generate two map tokens. Hopefully we can just tempo the opponent out with our Hadi Jin flying over and Mentor making an army. And then we also have two copies of Sunset Revelry, mostly here for the Mono Red matchup, which can be pretty tough. Can gain us some more life back, make some blocking tokens on the ground, and potentially even draw a card. And then two copies of Make Disappear, mostly to counter sweepers that might wipe our board otherwise and uh, reset all the work that our mentor has done. Can also just be a way to protect our Hadi Jin or counter some key cards from the opponent. And Casualty can also be enabled quite easily if we have a mentor in play, as we can just sacrifice a monk token. And then our mana base, just lots of blue-eyed dual lands that hopefully enter the battlefield untapped, only playing two copies of a darker waste, because we will often end up uh, tapping all our lands each turn, so then if we're paying one life whenever we cast a cantrip, that's going to add up, so I don't want to have too many of these, but uh, still running two, since we do want to have some uh, blue-eyed dual lands that enter untapped early, and then two copies of Deserted Beach, and then of course a full set of Sea Chrome Coast, which is perfect for a low land count deck, and then a seven islands, three planes, and the channel lands offering a bit more utility. No creature land in this build, just because we want to avoid tap lands, and usually we're happy to stay at a relatively low land count, around three or four, so we wouldn't be able to necessarily activate the creature land anyway. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Can start by filling the graveyard with gaze, which will set up Hadi Jin nicely. Opponent blue-black with their own gaze, okay. Possible they're on a similar deck. Nope, more of a reanimator deck with the bringer. Although this one at least doesn't trigger if they reanimate it. And then get lost. 
It's probably not going to be super needed early, but might be useful later in the game. I'll keep one Seachrome Coast. Good to have a painless white source. And then... Next turn we'll have to decide which 3-drop to play first. Opponent also flashing back a gaze. So possible there on the uh, Squirming Emergence deck. We did find a recommission, although we did not mill any expensive creatures so far. Probably still good to keep in case we need to get back one of our current creatures. And then Prankster is also good. Probably don't need Consider. And then could start with Hodijin, could start with Mentor. Let's go with Hodijin first. And yeah, there we see the squirming emergence. So finding a counter spell could be important. The opponent's permanent count is four, five, six, seven. So they can already reanimate a Titan of Industry next turn. So yeah, it's imperative that Prankster finds a counter spell here if we want to have a chance. So to that end. I guess we can start by casting Gaze. Because that can maybe dig towards a counter spell, whereas if we prankster first, the Gaze is not going to help. So graveyard everything. Prankster. Found a Get Lost. Not super useful, but I guess we can destroy the Titan in response to the trigger. So that's something. And then we could recommission another Haughty Djinn here. And attack. If her opponent tries to bring back their... Uh, Virtue of Persistence, then uh, we can destroy that as well. But yeah, Titan makes sense, so we want to get lost in response to the trigger, providing a shield counter. Opponent still gained 5, and then now we can play Mentor and still flash back a Gaze. Maybe growing Haughty Djinn some more and our opponent explodes. Yeah, just too much damage coming across. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and yeah, our plan is to hopefully mill over one of our 3 drops between Consider and Prankster, and then recommission them back. Opponent also blue-white. And do we want an island? Yeah, I guess a third land could be useful. Celestus, so it's more of a control deck we're up against. And there's a Mentor, perfect. So we can recommission Mentor and then still probably slide of hand for now. Keep the instant speed considered for later. And it's actually a close call. I might just want the extra planes so we can double two drop next turn. And then hoping they don't exile Mentor. If they destroy it, we can still recommission. But they already have five mana, so Sunfall could be in our future. And there it is. Alright, that was kind of the worst case scenario. But we've got a couple more pranksters to try and bring some more creatures back.
probably go for a helping hand, even though we already have a recommission in hand. Could also play a prankster just as a creature here to apply a little bit of pressure, but it's almost negligible. So maybe we'll just pass and then uh, end of turn go for another prankster. And Jace, okay, four opponents actively milling us. That can kind of help us in a way, but we're also helping them. So that resolves. Can get lost to destroy it as well. Plans are already in motion. Yeah, opponent's gonna actively mill us. So we can get lost to destroy the Jace. And I'm unlikely to want a prankster now. Okay, so step one, helping hand. I think I still like mentor over haughty gin. Although we could also go for haughty gin and then recommission the mentor. Although if we go for mentor first, even though it costs more mana, it um, will net us more monk tokens. But of course, at that point, we're overextending into another sweeper. So, close call. I think it might still be worth it to recommission. Get a Haughty Djinn. And then we can pass with some of our instants available. That's one deadly Haughty Djinn. Opponent transforms. Probably wouldn't see that if they had another Sunfall lined up. Right, opponent goes exploring. Now if our opponent's planning to mill us with the uh, Teresian Mindbreaker, I believe is the name, which has unearthed, we can still get lost at instant speed to take it out before it gets a chance to attack. So that's also important. But our opponent found another Jace instead, can mill us for 15 at the very least. Now we haven't found our counter spell. Did we mill any copies of Make Disappear? We did not. So there's still a few in the deck. Yeah, I think we try Prankster then. Even though it mills myself, it can maybe find a counter spell, which could just win us the game. Possible our opponent has some two mana instant speed removal or a Wandering Emperor that they're trying to set up. If it's two mana removal, they could respond to the Prankster which is a reason to just do nothing here. But I kind of want to use my mana and make some more monks. There's a Meg Disappear, that's huge. So now I'm not gonna tap out. Aha, uh -huh, Soaring City. Well, that one we cannot counter. But we can try and counter Jace on the way down, I suppose. So flashback gaze versus cast consider. Let's flashback gaze. And then probably put most of these in the graveyard. Keep Haughty Gin, although I'm not sure if we're even gonna have the time to cast it. 22 cards. Sure. So lost his triggers. So we want to cast Haughty Jin and then just keep up Make Disappear. Although we could also get lost the token in the meantime just to get a nice attack in. With our opponent at 20, can we somehow kill them with prowess triggers? If we consider get lost, and then that's 9 plus 4 is 13. Yeah, we're going to be a little bit short even if we find some more cantrips. So I think we stick to the plan. Haughty Jin, get lost the token. Keep up Meg disappear. Can counter unless they pay 4.
And then Jace is not lethal by itself. Smite. Yeah, I think we let that happen. Could try to consider and hope to find another island, since we haven't played land for the turn, but it seems too risky. So if our opponent plays Jace, we could just let it resolve, since it doesn't kill us. If they shrink a creature down, we still kill them. So we're more worried about removal on Hardy Gen or a uh, sweeper here. So Jace happens. Our opponent can draw three with it, admittedly. But hopefully they don't draw multiple two mana removal spells. And our opponent explodes. Hardy Jin can cross the finish line. Sweet, onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand's decent. Get to keep up Make Disappear and Prankster on turn two. And then fill the graveyard for Hardy Jin. Did end up drawing both Adarkar Wastes. So would like to find a painless blue source eventually. Warden points towards maybe a red-white tokens deck. And a bunny corn. Yeah, that one's kind of scary. So let's counter it. It's not gonna stay small for very long. And then I do have the option of Chardacore's discard Hardy Jin to then recommission it. But we could also just cast a Hardy Jin now. And the red-white deck typically doesn't have much removal, so I'm fine with it. And then now we can cast our spells for one mana. Evangelist is fine. And they can grow the Warden. Mentor is great. So, a couple ways we can do it here. Could chart a course before attacking to discard Mentor, and then recommission it back for one mana, and then we can still Slide of Hand or Prankster, or maybe both. Uh, could also attack, cast chart a course hoping to find a land, and then play Mentor, or just play Mentor. Kind of liking the recommission line, to be honest. Since it also grows Hardy Jin before attacking, if we want to attack with it. And then if I want to hit a land drop, Slide of Hand I guess is fine. No blue mana sadly, in that case Get Lost is fine. And then I think it's okay to attack. And there's another bunny corn. Warden. Do they have a convoked knight errant as well? One card left. They can at the very least activate a warden a few times. So right now Evangelist is kind of a threat, but so are Bunny Corn and Warden. So there's a few things we need to deal with. Points at 16, can we just take them out actually? So 7, 8 on the board, and every spell we cast is plus 3 damage at the very least. Prankster likely more. Uh, so if we double Prankster, consider Get Lost. That should be enough for lethal here. Find Charter Course. Go for, I guess, Charter Course. Maybe find more blue mana. Because that's potentially a constraint here, not having enough blue mana. I guess a helping hand will have to do. Uh, 
And that's already lethal, but we can cast one more removal spell. Alright, did not think we would have been able to attack for lethal here, but either way, we were also building up a huge board. So we should have been prepared to handle an attack back. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a somewhat slow hand that's lacking a payoff card. There's no self mill either to enable helping hand. So I think that's a few too many strikes against it. Okay, well, this hand has a lot of card draw, so we're gonna keep, but uh, this could still go in a lot of different directions. Probably don't need to keep three lands when we have four cantrips and I don't want to flood out. And then start with maybe a consider, since that has the high upside of maybe milling a three drop and then being able to get it back. Now I'll keep a prankster. May regret bottoming the land now. Up against red aggro with turn one Kumano. So keeping a handful of cantrips is not exactly where we want to be in this matchup. Need to get on the board quickly. So Prankster's not the best way of doing that, since it's not going to help find a 3-drop. Although it has a chance of milling a 3-drop and finding a Helping Hand or Recommission versus Chartercourse, which now needs to both find a 3-drop and a land. Upside of Prankster is that at the very least I can cast a 1-3, which technically blocks a 2-2, but as we all know, a Monstrous Rage is unlikely to make that work. For now another Kumano, so lucky that they didn't have another creature. Did mill Hodijin and found a Get Lost, which looks to be the pick here. Could also go for Gaze, put an upkeep stop, cast a Gaze, hoping to find a Helping Hand. The problem with getting the Get Lost is I'm still going to be tapping out in my turn with Charter Course. So maybe it is actually Gaze and try and get this Hodijin in play as soon as possible. And then we can still slide of hand if we fail to find helping hand specifically. Also wouldn't mind keeping a land on top. Sunset Revelry is also kind of tempting. So I want the land to hit my land for the turn. Then we can cast a charter course. And then... Problem is, if I keep all of these on top, we're still pretty far away from ever putting a threat on the battlefield. So maybe keep the Revelry, but get rid of the Get Lost to get a bit closer towards one of our 3-drops. And at this point, Recommission and Helping Hand are also fine since we have double Hot Agent in the graveyard. So I'm just gonna chart a course now, I think, versus play Prankster. You know what? Prankster is actually not too horrible. Can maybe help attack and then chart a course to draw two. The opponent does get their first 2-2 etching of Kumano. Can also make it so that our creatures get exiled instead of going to the graveyard if they damage them. And there's a squee. Likely for them to have a impactful 3-drop when they didn't have any cheaper creatures. Take out the goblin. Okay, so if I Revelry, we get to make tokens and gain life, don't get to draw any cards. So I may as well try to attack with Prankster, chart a course and see where we end up. Hopefully hit a land drop at least. Okay. And then Revelry it is. Triple blocking Squee may not work out. And Godric is next, also flies. So now we could triple block Squee and get away with it. Could also double block Etching. And then eat a token. Thing dealing with Squee is probably more important since Squee will keep enabling Godric as well. But still take 9 damage here, so. It's not looking great. Another chart, of course. Yeah, not really the time to draw those. So what's the plan? Attack, chart, of course. 
hope for the best. Don't think uh, milling more with Prankster is going to be super helpful unless we were to find another rivalry or get lost, but those odds are not incredibly high. I guess the upside of Prankster is that it gives us a slightly better chance than Charred Course of finding Helping Hand or Recommission, although Helping Hand's making Hotigen enter tapped is also not that great. So I think I still prefer Charter Course since it can also help hit an extra land drop. And when our hand is this clunky, that's probably necessary. Found Mentor but can't cast it. So... Now we could slide of hand, still maybe hit a land, cast a 2 drop, or we can just Charter Course. And then maybe still hit a land, cast a 1 drop. I found a helping hand, but is it too little too late? So assuming we chump Godric, we're still taking five. Have to assume our opponent's got three points of burn that they can push. So yeah, it just took us a little bit too long to get the ball rolling this game. And uh, Monored is very good at punishing slow draws. So I'm sure we'll see a Monstrous Rage or Lightning Strike here. Monstrous Rage, Godric also enables Celebration. And yeah, this is more than enough. GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw and our hand is decent. We could potentially chart a course on turn 2, discarding Mentor, and then for 1 mana bring it back. Up against a red-green, could be a dinosaur deck. If we expect the opponent to remove Mentor, then maybe we just want to cast it and then Helping Hand to bring it back. But uh, I don't think we're taking out the Paleontologist, even though... If we get lost a dinosaur, our opponent will eventually get it back. But it might still be a better tempo play to save this for an expensive dinosaur. And then for now, make the play we described. Okay, let's go for it. And then next turn, bring back Mentor. And then we can get lost as well. And we've got to get lost for days. Hulking Raptor, sadly, we won't be able to take out right away. So... Might have to go for the Prankster. So the question is, do we take out Paleontologist with a Get Lost? Opponent will still have potentially 6 mana thanks to the Raptor. So I don't think it makes a huge difference. I'll just pass. And then by casting our instant in the opponent's turn, Mentor also grows with prowess, so it can potentially survive a 2 damage burn spell. Opponent activating the ridge line. That one I don't mind casting the get lost, so if this attacks they can grow with a dino. So let's just do it now. Opponent can now potentially explore. I'll take the hits. And a lore keeper's next. Okay, Char Course is nice. Can maybe attack first and then cast it. And then use a prankster to enable prowess. Or we can get lost on the raptor here and pay the ward, which would be my whole turn. Opponent does now have extra mana from Lorekeeper and Paleontologist. Given that they activated the Ridge Line, it kind of feels like they may not have a ton of expensive cards in hand. Either way, let's attack first. See if they block. Alright, they're gonna block like this. Either Prankster or Get Lost to Raptor. Now I'm kind of liking Get Lost on Raptor. Pay the ward.
and set them back on mana quite a bit. And if they play something like a Dracosaur, we still have a third Get Lost available. Alright, opponent goes exploring. Finds another Hulking Raptor, keeps it on top. It is good value to put dinosaurs in the graveyard with a paleontologist when it can eventually get them back. But our opponent's happy to just grow the paleontologist, keeps it back on defense. So yeah, we could make quite the tempo play here by just destroying the paleontologists and attacking. Which I'm not hating here. Maybe start with Prankster. And see what else we find. A helping hand, although no creature to get back. Let's grab a Charter Course. And then we can consider. Slide of hand can go. And then, if I main phase chart, of course, we can attack into the Paleontologist, which seems fine. And alright, our opponent explodes. Too many Monk tokens from Mentor for the Dinosaur deck to handle. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and yeah, we're pretty all in on finding some creature to reanimate with Helping Hand and Recommission. But between Gaze and Charter Course, we've got a good chance of doing so. Could potentially reanimate on turn 2 already, if we get lucky. Facing a red aggro, presumably. With a turn 1 Kumano. Alright, so we need some luck, and Hardy Jin in Graveyard is perfect. And then Slide of Hand to grow it, don't need Island. So we could Helping Hand and then cast a 1-mana Charter Course or 1-mana Gaze. I think I'm just going for Recommission. Giving Hardy Jin an extra point of toughness could also come in handy. And then I'll put an Upkeep Stop on the off chance that I want to Gaze before drawing. Second Kumano. And our opponent explodes. Turn to Hardy Jin gets it done. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Consider on one. Turn to either make the spear or prankster. And then hopefully find some of our impactful cards. That's one of them. So now if we find one of our reanimation cards, we could consider something fancy like Charter Course discarding Hardy Jin. The bat, we either need to get lost or make disappear. Black, green, so kind of a mid-range deck. I think we might be better off using the get lost and then keep make disappear to maybe protect Hardy Jin from spot removal. Other opponent will get to see our hand as a drawback of not countering. And of course they get the map tokens right away. Although usually the map tokens are only going to be relevant later in the game. So yeah, tough choice here. I don't think I want to tap out for Hardy Jin. Although, then again, if they destroy it, there's a good chance we can eventually bring it back with Prankster finding a helping hand, for instance. So maybe that's okay. The turn I really want to keep a make disappear is turn 4 when our opponent could play Shieldred. Preacher is still manageable. And now we have double make the spear up. So, would like to hit an extra land drop so we can attack Charter Course. And then still have make disappear up if we fail to find another blue source. So, I'm not going to prankster before attacking, even though it could grow the Hardy Jin. Find another Jin. Could risk it and cast another Charter Course here, hoping to find blue mana. Since an extra land would go a long way here. Yeah, maybe that's still worthwhile. Shields down on Make Disappear potentially, so they can resolve a Shieldred. 
There's also a chance we find another Get Lost we can cast. Alright, no blue mana, but we did find a recommission, so if they destroy Hardy Jin, it's not a disaster. Opponent with a tapped land. Right now, Preacher is not drawing cards, it's just making a 1 1 lifelink. And they're gonna start growing the token by exploring. And I go for the throats, kept on top, makes sense. And a Dread Knight. Alright, we've got our work cut out for us. So currently, nothing to recommission. And if I play Hardy Jin, I don't have Make Disappear available. But then again, Make Disappear is not that great when trying to counter Go for the Throats, when I don't have any tokens to sacrifice. I would like to hit my land drop for the turn, and then I'm probably interested in just casting another Hardy Jin. Finding a Monastery Mentor would also be great. Chart, of course. Well, we've been here before. Could keep it on top, attack, draw two. But I think I need to just dig for blue mana. Although that being said, if I play Hardy Jin, they're going to destroy the untapped one and still get an attack in. So maybe it's not that important that I play another Hardy Jin. That being said, I still need to find a land. Find Gaze instead. So now I'll just consider one more time. Hoping to find blue mana, I get lost. Can destroy Preacher at least. Is that what we want? Not really. Alright, there's our blue. So now we can attack. Another option was to potentially play Prankster as a creature so we could enable Make Disappear. But that didn't seem too exciting. So, Puns attacking, and then likely keeping up go for the throats. We've got a few options available. Just goes for Dread Knights, okay. So now we can counter go for the throats, as long as we don't tap out, which I don't think we're going to now. And then there's a chance we can just kill them with Hardy Jin. Especially if we start with Prankster milling a few cards. Alright, and then we have to select something, it's not optional, but I guess uh, a Get Lost is fine now. Even though Helping Hand Get Back Mentor is kind of sweet too. Still have a recommission in hand as well. So Hardy Jin 10 power. Yeah, should be able to get it up to 12 pretty easily. So can a recommission mentor. And get lost something. Can be the vampire token. Can be preacher. And then now Hardy Jin goes up to 12 power and have double make disappear up. There's no food tokens I need to worry about. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Opponent also blue-white. And an officer, so soldiers. Uh, for now, probably leaning slide of hand, keep the instant speed consider for later. And then land four versus another slide of hand. Next turn we're likely casting the Prankster's Adventure. Turn three Haughty Jin. I guess a land is useful so we can keep interaction with our other cantrips without needing to worry about land drops. Turn two veterans, so yeah, that's already hitting us pretty hard. And there's Mentor, so that can maybe help stabilize. Still going for Prankster here. But yeah, being on the draw in these types of matchups is pretty rough.
at least this turn wasn't too devastating. Yeah, I don't think we're ever going to be able to keep up a counter spell in this matchup. We're just going to be tapping out turn after turn. So if that's the case, what do we prefer? Next turn, Haughty Jin likely gets answered by a Brutal Cathar since our opponent didn't do anything. And then the turn after we can go Mentor plus maybe Consider. And then turn after is when we're maybe starting to cast some of these spells. I guess I'll take a Prankster. I think I still prefer Haughty Jin getting removed as opposed to Mentor, since Mentor we can get value right away. And if it does stick the landing, Haughty Jin actually holds off an attack, whereas Mentor does not. But yeah, given their last turn, they either have an impactful 4-drop or a Brutal Cathar. Ooh, Roaming Throne. Naming Soldier? Okay, I'm a fan. Although, I may no longer be a fan if our opponent exiles my two creatures next turn with a Cathar. So, maybe grabbing the Make Disappear would have worked out better. Frontliner triggers twice with the Roaming Throne. So, I'll block the Officer. Could also just block Frontliner, but then they still get to unearth it. Okay, I think it's still Mentor, Keep Up, Consider. And there's only one Make Disappear left in the deck, so trying to find it with a Prankster seems unlikely to work for us. I guess we can also Prankster instead of Consider now. So yeah, keeping the land early in the game ended up being useful. One card in hand. And what could it be? Opponent sends in everyone. So go for Prankster. And then keeping Mentor alive is probably the priority. That can just block the Frontliner. And we did actually find another Make Disappear. I guess now that we can get one of these in hand, trading one of my creatures is fine. So I could trade Haughty Jin for Roaming Throne, take four Mentor Blocks Frontliner, and then Recommission versus Helping Hand. I think we go for Helping Hand since it's cheaper, even though the creature doesn't enter untapped. Although it feels like our opponent's holding something relevant here. Could be a channel land. Alright, we're at two. And let's start here. I do want to hit an extra land drop if possible. Ideally a blue source maybe should have Started with a sleight of hand, since if we find a white source, I could have still cast Helping Hand with it. So maybe it could have sequenced a bit better. Alright, get the island. And then now we can pass and cast everything else at instant speed. Could even try to get cheeky and get a few attacks in. Sure. Small chance they have a Wandering Emperor, but I think we would have seen it last turn. And then I'll keep my instance to enable prowess in the opponent's turn. Okay, they did have reinforcements after all. But we can generate a bunch more tokens. So if they don't have anything else relevant, we should still survive. Beachhead, they have to decide between activating that or unearthing Frontliner. But uh, yeah, if one of their creatures connects and we don't mess with their veteran, every creature is lethal. So it probably makes more sense for them to unearth. We could still prankster and maybe find a removal spell. Bonum goes for the Beachhead activation, fair enough. Attacks all out. And uh, yeah, that's 
gonna be fine for us, I think. Actually found a get lost. Can consider as well. And then I'm pretty sure opponent dies on the way back. And that's the power of an unchecked Monastery Mentor. Cast a few more of these, although we already had lethal in play, so I'm not going to torture the opponent any longer. Alright, so we get to see our blue-eyed helping hand deck in action, and the deck can be very impressive when we get to actually reanimate a mentor or Hodijin as early as turn two. Definitely prepare to play grindy matchups against removal heavy decks as long as they don't exile our creatures, and that's gonna be one of the main vulnerabilities is cards like Sunfall wiping our board if we don't have a timely counter spell, and other removal spells like Leyline Binding. And then if we're up against the aggressive red decks with an etching of Kumano early, they can also try and exile our creatures. Features. Red aggro in general seems like a tough matchup for our deck since it takes a while to get things going and then the red deck tends to have cheap answers to a mentor so then it's going to be difficult to generate that army of monk tokens to begin with. Can potentially be addressed by adding cards like Elspeth's Smite as a one mana removal spell that lines up pretty well in the matchup. Could also add more copies of Sunset Revelry and I've even seen cards like Temporary Lockdown in the sideboard which could also come in since it doesn't exile our own three drops and and then it can still deal with a lot of 1 and 2 mana cards from the opponent. So there's a few ways we can approach this deck. Could also add a third color to the archetype. Adding black gives us access to some nice removal spells and maybe discard spells for the control matchups. Adding red can give us access to some nice burn spells as well. So there's a few ways to approach it. But yeah, overall the archetype seems pretty exciting and uh, definitely gets to showcase Monastery Mentor nicely, which used to be a powerhouse and standard, but hasn't really seen the light of day so far. So hopefully that'll change. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day.